you come round the sharp left bend, you'll see birds green on the left. I'm going to turn down there and there's a little uh, sports field and pavilion with a little bit of parking. Now if there's football on or something or a sporting event we might not be able to park down here but if there's nothing on and you sort of bare left where it's this pavilion to the left and and look <laughs> it's like there is a sport event on so I don't know that I'm going to be able to park here today no so what I might do is uh, go back and try and find the lay-by but normally you'd be able to park here so I could technically squeeze on the grass there but I don't want to get I don't want to block anyone in or get blocked in so we will go back out of the pavilion area back towards the village and there's a bit of park in there but I would imagine that's for residents I don't want to upset the residents so we turn left into the village I think there's a bit of a lay-by oh, there's a bit of a lay-by here actually the bus stop yeah we can we can just park here I think and then you're right in you're right in town well that didn't go according to plan but anyway you can see you can park at the pavilion or in the village Today's walk is a little over five miles from the centre of Rattlesden, up across some lovely lanes up to Shillam Church, and then back round through some more fields with great views back down into Rattlesden. Come and join me. So just before we start the walk, little reminder, don't forget to hit that red subscribe button. Click the little bell icon and you'll get notifications of new videos. So we're now walking back along the street to Bird Lane towards the pavilion. I see the Brewers Arms pub on the right here. Like they've got the socially distant dining going there, no doubt some Sunday roast going on later. But we're gonna go down here. Some beautiful cottages here in Rattleston. This one's for sale. Check out the duck thatch on the roof. We're just walking back towards the pavilion where we tried to park. Yes, yeah, so it looks like there's football on there this morning. Sporting event, so obviously parking is at a premium down here. Probably could have squeezed in, but never mind. Parked in the village. And then we just keep right on this track. Past the pavilion there on your left. Yeah, so we pass this uh, bit more waterworks on the right here. And the concrete road comes to an end. And then we take up the footpath. And basically you just carry on down this track till you come back to the Stowmarket Road. 
which along here is the allotments and we keep slightly left of the allotment area on the footpath some lovely views back over to Ralston already across the field but we are going to now this footpath is a bit overgrown but it is a right of way it is a footpath so don't fear it's on the Warden and survey map could do with whoever looks after the footpaths coming out with a strummer a bit but then we are mid-August so it's going to be a bit overgrown isn't it really just carry on right through here right down to the end should come out into a field somewhere and so we continue on across this field once you're in this field just keep to the right of the field following this hedge here on your right keep along this footpath till you come to Stowe Market Road over another stile I got rid of the heat wave and a little bit of rain Oh, it's very close today it's still very warm I didn't put shorts on because I thought it might not be as warm that could be a big mistake I don't think we need to bother with a style here because uh, it's been a bit of a disaster with the gate by the look of it so we can just walk through and once you're through the gate turn left on to Stone Market Road so we're just walking on the road a little way we're going to turn right onto I think it's called Back Lane right. yep turn right onto Back Lane All that little track Ooh. I don't know what that was could have been a there's a big pigeon or a sparrowhawk lovely idyllic cottage here So you can see we're quickly away from the traffic and the houses in this rather little idyllic back lane we come to an even more spectacular little lane down here and there is a little footpath off to the left there which I think would just bring you around back into Rattleston so not going down there we just carried on down this track here a little bit muddy and you come to this corner here the footpath to the left and straight on but we're not taking either of those going to bear right with the track and stay on that such regular viewers will know I'm walking a thousand miles this year not on this walk this walks about five miles something like that but over the course of 2020 I am attempting to walk a thousand miles a little bit behind here's the figure 
as you can see we're just about halfway but today it's uh, we're mid-August so we're, we're slightly past halfway through the year so I need to do some longer walks in the second half of the year to keep up. Today's walk is about just over five miles so that will help a little bit. So just down here you come to a fork in the lane and you want to take the left fork like here for example so this little lane is called gypsy lane i wonder where it got its name from i can't find anything online I'd hazard a guess that there were gypsy travellers in this area. They used to come in for the summer season to help with the harvest and some money. So if you go back far enough to the horse-drawn gypsy caravan days, uh, you can imagine down this lane the gypsy caravans coming in the summer looking for a bit of shade while they worked on the fields round about and this would be ideal because it's a little shaded lane and you could imagine them perhaps all the horses and the travellers caravans parked down here a little community in the summer and then they'll have moved on when the harvest ended, I guess. Oh wow, horse are coming down. Do you mind being in a YouTube video about the area? Um, yeah, can be. Okay. <laughs> we were wondering what you had in your hand. Yeah, I'll just do little walk videos around oh, the area. Wow. But I was just talking about possibility of the old gypsy caravans down here and That's the horses. Gypsy, gypsy lane, isn't yeah. That? Exactly what they would have been, yeah. And I sort of said, imagine the horses yeah. come out, and then you came round the yeah, corner. Oh, so. well, and this is here, the gypsy cob. Yeah. Yeah. Gypsy cob in front. Oh, right. Even better. Oh, oh nice to see you anyway. <laughs> well, that was nice. Just talking about the horses drawn gypsy carts and. Two horses came down the lane, as if to illustrate the point. Marvellous. And one thing I can highly recommend if you come down here in the summer is not sticking your big fat elbows out into nettles. I now have a nettle sting on my elbow and I really want to scratch it but as we know if you scratch a nettle sting it goes even worse I don't have any antihistamine or anything really so I'm just going to try and bear the pain of that I'm now seeing another great big nettle sticking out of my elbow here And this bit of the walk here is absolutely idyllic. Just the canopy over Gypsy Lane. Sounds of birds and possibly other wildlife in the woodland. Marvellous. Marvellous, marvellous. The 
seems to be a very old bit of car wreckage here. I think the roof and the possibly the dashboard and the rear window struts. How did it get there? What is the story? Did it crash here? Or was it an old banger and it's just ended up there? A bit of ancient fly tipping. I'd love to know. I don't think we ever will. It looked like a really old car. And eventually, if you can dodge the brambles, you will come to a road here. We are then going to turn, oops, and then going to turn right onto this road. And almost immediately on your left, you will see a footpath sign. Well, actually, it says restricted byway, but it's a footpath. I'm not entirely sure what a restricted byway is. Um, it's shown as a footpath on the map, so we're not restricted from walking down here. Whether it's, uh, maybe it's restricted for horse riders, I don't know. But I guess, I think those two ladies we saw probably came down here. I don't know which other way they would have come. So we carry on straight up this path. You can't go wrong on this one. And this will bring you out at Shelland Church. And there, uh, I think we may stop for some refreshments. Sorry about my heavy breathing, but by this stage of any walk, I tend to be panting a bit now. Got the camera equipment on the back and a drink. Uh, I'm not the most fit person at we will get there, slow and steady. Eventually, you come out of the trees. Nice views across the field. Oops, on the horse poop. Some horses do come down here. Nice views across the field. Whatever you do, don't be like that naughty. Theresa May, who has a habit of running through fields of wheat. Because I don't think the farmers appreciate that. It's very, very naughty, Theresa. The other reason I'm possibly panting is this is the section of the walk that is slightly uphill. That's my excuse anyway. As you come up this field, You'll see in the distance the corner of Shell and Church. Because of the pandemic, it might be closed. Let's see. It's 
No, it is not. No church building today, but it's a very old church. It's Shannon Church with box pews and I'll see if I can get in at a later date, but I think because of the apocalypse, I think that is closed. And now I shall sit on the bench and have some more refreshments. Shelland Church behind us, we're gonna bear left onto Shelland Green now. Basically just cross the road. You could stay on the road here, if that's the way we're going, but it's nicer to actually follow the footpath which goes across Shelland Green. We just get onto the road here. And as I say you could go straight down there but footpath actually goes down here. It is a private green but there is a footpath here. So I just follow this track round its natural course. Now this right turn here is somebody's drive, don't go down there just uh, straight on. In fact you can see the little yellow footpath sign on the post straight ahead there. Nice view of this spectacular thatched cottage here. And the footpath fairly clearly marked. You keep right on the edge. You don't walk across this person's lawn on the grand house there. And you'll see some Metal posts in, just indicating that the footpath is this side of the left side of those. And just follow this footpath, there's a couple of markers, but basically the little metal posts in the lawn keep to the left of those so you're not on somebody's property. But uh, the footpath just run down here and it just kind of follows the green round, bears left and comes back to the main road. Here again the cut grass disappears but don't turn left which is what it looks like. Keep on along the green. Don't know if it's an aircraft or a couple of rumbles of thunder in the distance. We are forecast thunder and lightning today. But I've calculated that I should be back with the van or even home before that starts but you can never be sure. Now think about it, I haven't brought a raincoat or anything. I have just got this t-shirt I'm wearing. As you can see indicated by the public footpath sign there. Uh, it's not very clear here that there is a footpath but I can assure you from the map there is. And at the end here we just rejoin the road uh, but bear right onto the road. Walk down the road a bit. So we just carry on down this road until we get a left turn and then we'll find another footpath and get off the roads. Feeling spots of rain so I hope it doesn't rain but it's just uh, 
little hint of something to come later. So there's the 30 mile an hour sign. I'm just going to cross to the left and follow the road round to the left onto the main road. Testing, testing. And just be careful here because this is quite a busy road, quite a fast road into Woolpit. Cross over to the right, front of the house. And just beyond that drive is a very hidden little footpath. And we are gonna go down there. And the footpath is literally just here at the side of the house. I can't see a sign here, but I can assure you from the walking map, this is a footpath. I'm doing this from memory now, but down here when we get to the end of this, I may just have to check the directions. So I don't want to get lost, and don't want you to get lost. Fairly sure we just turn left at the end of here. I will check. Oh, I think some birds might have terrible in there. Yes, so we do turn left here. So when you merge into the field here, so we've just come out of the footpath, as you saw. So turn left down here, and then we'll turn right along the edge of that field to that woodland there, which is called Bird's Wood. And then I'll look at the map again. A few more rumbles of thunder, a few more spots of rain. Hoping I can at least get back to the van before the rain comes. So I'm not really prepared for rain. Some people don't like the thunder and lightning. Get quite scared of it, but when I was about three years old, we lived in Manchester. Our house was struck by lightning little terrace house you can see in this old picture second from this end and the lightning struck our chimney all the bricks from the chimney fell down the chimney into the fireplace causing a plume of set to come into the living room where we were having our breakfast my memory of that day is that me and my two brothers had then there were two more sins, but they had two older brothers back then. And we were shunted up three doors down the street to Grandma's house, where we tried to resume breakfast. But all I remember is that the uh, the Rice Krispies or Noddy's Ricicles or whatever it was we were having tasted of soot. Uh, so I think we ended up having a jam butty or something my Grandma made. So as you probably saw, we've kind of swung right. We're going down the side of this field now, up to Bird's Wood, which you can see in the distance. You just follow the edge of the field, basically. Yeah, back to the story of the uh, house getting struck by lightning. My dad took, took the washing line down, tied it across the street in front of the house so that people weren't hit by falling masonry from the collapsed chimney. Uh, at some stage, some builders arrived to mend the chimney. Strangely, I didn't feel fear at the time. It's just, I remember my mum, I was stood in front of the fireplace. My mum was stood between me and the window. I just remember this bright light, which <laughs> turned my mum into a silhouette for a split second. This almighty crack or crash and then just the noises of the bricks tumbling down the chimney. Uh, it was all a bit of an adventure, really. So, I know you can get struck by lightning. And I am stood out here in the middle of nowhere, holding a metal pole into the air. 
and the camera on the end, so maybe I should be a bit more concerned. But I think we'll be all right. So at the moment, this is a field of harvested wheat or barley or something. And we've got a crop of what looks like corn on the cob. Anyway, this here is bird's wood. We're going to walk along the edge of there, right to the end. When we get to the end there, we're going to cut up to that other woodland, which is great wood. Where is it? There <laughs> is great wood. And then we're going to walk up the side of that. It's basically just stay along the side of bird's wood here. The uh, footpath isn't very clear, but basically just stay at the edge of the field. And we come to the edge of the field here in the end of the woods. We're going to swing right, just in case you're confused. There's a little footpath sign there that makes it clear. So we swing right along this hedge. Then when you get to the gravel road here, you turn left. Oh, it's actually a tarmac road here. Anyway. Turn left on there. What we're going to do now is keep great wood on our right. Follow this little tarmac track to, I think, a gravel lane. And we're going to turn left there, but basically just walk around the edge of great wood. Enjoy the views across the field. The track just swings round the edge of the wood to the right here a little bit. So we just follow that. And then just ahead you'll see it joins a gravel track. We're going to go down there. Oh, it does say private there right away, but... I'd love to go walk in there. We shan't commit trespass. Yep, so we get to this gravel track here and we turn left. Follow that down there. Uh, this track just bends right and then left again to those farm buildings over there. That's where we're going. Disturb the birdies. Sorry, birdies. Yeah, come around the bend like you've just seen. And then follow the track, swings left over to them farm buildings over there. What we're going to do now is go down to the end of here. You'll see some farm buildings. The track is this way, but we're going to walk along that line of hedges there and there's a house there and then that big one I think in the distance is Clopton Hall. Just before their driveway we're going to turn right through the bushes on a little footpath. All will become clear. So when you come to the farm buildings at the end of this track we're going to turn left onto this footpath and go down here. When you come to this fork in the track, uh, this track here is the drive to, I think that's Clopton Hall, that's their drive. But you'll see here a little footpath sign turning right just before their drive. Yeah, and uh, we're going to go in there.
we come to a little wooden bridge which we cross over subject to brambles and nettles and then just follow the track up the edge of this field keeping to the left it's not clearly marked really but you can kind of see where it is basically keep these old what look like derelict farm buildings on your left and the field on your right you won't go far wrong and at the top of the field here we're going to Bit left and just keep the farm on your left and the field on your right and go down here when you reach the end of the hedge here we're going to turn right up towards those trees up there Yep, so we just come up there, get to the end of this woodland, just swing right, keeping the woodland on your left, field on your right, and walk down. The good news is, from here on in, it's all downhill. It's either flat or downhill. And you see this field ends here with these crops. I think what we do is turn right when we get to the end of this field. So this track runs straight along the field and it brings you to the road. Brings you to the road you can see there. But we're going to avoid the road there is a little technically there's a footpath down the inside of the field back into Rattleston just before you get to the road to say turn left down the side of the inside of the field get rid of the wasp or whatever that was and you just walk down here to a little wooden bridge in the corner What you want to do in the bottom right hand corner of this field is look for a little wooden bridge which is just coming into view now. You can do that without getting stung by the nettles in your elbows, even better. Right, so we come to the road junction here, across the first road, and we at uh, this fork here we're going to bear slightly right onto the, I think that's lower road and this is upper road. I just noticed Rattleston Cemetery there, which I didn't notice before. I have to come and, as you've seen in previous videos, I do like a good cemetery. I do research a bit of history. So we follow along the road here, Upper Road, I think it's called. Come to the church and a couple of other interesting items. Now you notice on the Rattleston sign there was a picture of the church and an anchor. And it is said that when the river was a lot wider, I mean, it's very narrow now, when the river was a lot wider back in the old days, they did bring the stones from Normandy, I think, for the abbey at Bury St. Edmunds and docked at Rattleston. So history tells us there was a quayside here in Rattleston but I'll show you the river in a minute. It's probably completely dried up now. But it's very narrow when it comes through the village today. But obviously, as we saw, this is a deep valley. So it would have been wider back when the abbey was built in Bury St Edmunds. 
across into the churchyard. I just come in the church because uh, somewhere I think there's a memorial people who left here to go to America also has an association with the American Air Base which can be seen here but I'm sure I read that some of the early Pilgrim Fathers oh this may be to do with it Richard Kimball of Suffolk, England and Ipswich, Massachusetts, USA by his American descendants. So I think uh, Richard Kimball was the guy that left here in, uh, well, it says 1595 to 1675. That's the connection. I shall uh, so look that up. But yes, the other legend about this church is that this ring on the door, which I won't touch. This ring, I think, is from the top of an anchor found at the bottom of the river a long time ago. How true that is, I don't know. Lovely old houses here. Now I'm going to walk up the main path again back to Upper Road. So the footpath, so the path brings us back down to the lower road. And you see behind me there, the two whale bones. Actually they're wooden replicas, the originals had disappeared or went rotten. Yes, I don't know the uh, exact story of these whale bones. Apparently the owner of this property got hold of two real whale bones back in the day, put them up, they rotted in the end and then uh, more recently someone has made wooden replicas so we can remember what that was like. Yeah, this is the uh, the river rat <laughs> flows down here. I mean it does flood the road sometimes and we get very heavy rain but as you can see it's actually completely dried up at the moment. But this will have been wide enough at some point to bring fairly large boats up. But I think this was the terminus, this was the quayside somewhere here. So if you enjoyed this video don't forget to give us a thumbs up on YouTube, hit that red subscribe button and click the bell icon, you'll get notifications of new videos. I'll see you in the next video.